The current El Nino is one of the strongest on record. Its effects have been felt all over the world as extreme weather patterns, drought and excessive rain. Crops, cattle and fish have all been affected. It has also elevated global temperatures to a record level. But what does that mean for the so-called hiatus in global warming as measured by annual average surface temperatures? There has been a lack of significant warming seen over the last 15 years or so. Has the hiatus ended? Many headlines said 2015 was the year the hiatus was busted. Not all agree there has been a hiatus. Speaking at a recent press conference to announce the global temperature of 2015, NASA's Gavin Schmidt claimed the hiatus doesn't exist. Uh, the reason why this is such a warm uh, record year is because of the long-term underlying trend. Uh, and there is no evidence that that long-term trend uh, has slowed, paused or hiatus uh, at any point in the last uh, few decades. But this is not a view held by many. For example, very recently there have been papers about the hiatus published in peer-reviewed scientific journals, such as Nature Climate Change, Nature Geoscience, the Journal of Meteorological Research, Geophysical Research Letters, the Journal of Climate, and the Journal of Geophysical Research. In a recent review paper in Nature Climate Change, a team of scientists say a warming slowdown is thus clear in the observations, and that it is a compelling science problem, a problem deserving of scientific scrutiny. And explanations for the hiatus are many, from heat stored in the oceans, changes in the stratosphere or in volcanic activity, or the sun, or in inadequate data processing. There are over 30 explanations for the hiatus, and they can't all be correct. There is no consensus as to its cause, and the hiatus has been called the biggest problem in climate science. The year 2014 was warmer than previous years, but only by a tiny margin that was statistically insignificant. Despite this, it was hailed as a significant event by some. At the time, many thought that the predicted El Nino would raise global temperatures and see an end to the pause. But the El Nino came a year later than many expected. It was in the middle of 2015 that it appeared, and when it did, the world was already warmer than usual because of an unexpected region of warm water in the northeast Pacific, dubbed the Pacific Blob. This was an unprecedented event during the time we've had extensive temperature measurements of the Pacific. By mid-2015, experts were saying that it was the reason why the world was warmer than expected. The El Nino and the Pacific Blob, plus man-made global warming, made 2015 a record year. 0.13 degrees Celsius warmer than 2014, according to NASA. But there is no consensus about how large the contribution was from the El Nino. Estimates range from several tenths of a degree to a few thousandths. With the 2015 data, some proclaimed that the hiatus was over. A key point to make is that one should never use an El Nino year as a start or end point in determining temperature trends. An El Nino is natural variability, not man-made climate change. One shouldn't start analysing temperature trends in 1998, a peak El Nino year. Likewise, using 2015 as an end point is similarly unwise. Simply put, El Ninos are weather events and not climate change, and forecasts based upon the past two years are bound to exaggerate global warming. The latest observations of the sea temperature in the equatorial Pacific suggest that the El Nino has peaked and is declining rapidly. El Ninos are frequently followed by cooler than average periods called La Ninas, so you can probably expect 2016 to be warm, with the following two years somewhat cooler. But what does that mean for the hiatus? It means we have to wait for the current exceptional El Nino to end, and the subsequent La Nina, and a few years into normal conditions. Will global temperatures then remain static or start to rise again? Or will the current El Nino have established a new plateau? These are some of the major questions in climate science.